For Crema Media's Policy, I'm Sash Mudli. Imran Kabaria joins me today to discuss his book, A Spy in Time. For those expecting a book of essays from you, briefly tell our viewers what this book is about. This particular novel, why, why, is, it, why is it not a book of essays? Um, it's a good question. I think, uh, look, when you have a life spent writing and trying to do different kinds of imaginative work, you find that to some extent you exhaust the main things. I mean, it's like mining, I guess. You know, you exhaust the main things that you're mining and you feel like you need to move on. You need to do something different or you need to explore things from a different angle. Um, and often they're the same underlying subjects, but you just, you're interested in some other angle or space. And I think there are, there are some of the same underlying themes and problems here, but they are addressed in a different way. Some of the, the books I like the most are almost like dreams to read. You know, there's a kind of dreamlike quality from beginning to end. Uh, you know, and, it, and sometimes it can be a painful dream, but it's a dreamlike quality. And I don't think I've ever written anything like that. So this is partly my attempt to write something with that sense of, you know, you're not quite sure where you are. Is it real or is it not real? And almost as if the book is suspended, uh, you know, in midair. So I think that was, was my attempt to do that. And why a book about a time-traveling spy? Where was inspiration <laughs> for that? Aren't half the books nowadays about time-traveling spies? Um, what was the inspiration for it? Well, I read a lot of time travel stories, but I think that's what, after I decided it was about time travel. I think, look, some of it's about these primal emotions we feel as members of a group, right? And it's obviously something that's very important to us in South Africa, like which group do we belong to? Who are we friends with? Who's our enemy? You know, who do we feel are strangers and who, who's familiar? And obviously that's changing in South Africa. You know, when we talk about how spaces are coded, white spaces and black spaces and stuff, you can see that, you can see that, I've seen that changing in Cape Town over the last three, four, five years. And it's a very interesting process, painful, difficult, um, but also one that's actually quite easy to think about using time travel. And in this case, time travel from a world which is mostly black to a previous world which is mostly white. I think also one last thing that is in the back of my mind is if you're Muslim or black, you know, you have the flying while Muslim problem uh, or driving while black problem, which is suddenly you're super exposed because yeah. you're from this group. And these, these time travelers are black and they feel very exposed when they go back to a world which is mostly white because they're really not used to that situation. Now, you've said previously that to you this book is um, a look at some elemental issues of blackness and whiteness from an altered point of view. How so? I think as a country, we're in a very dogmatic place and people are not used to, and they're not used to changing places. They are, you know, we, we have kind of roles of victim and aggressor or master and slave and so forth, and they become very entrenched. And I think you can't understand our whole situation without wanting to swap places with people and understand what they're doing. So I think this is my attempt to kind of say, look, these issues of race are, they seem to be very embedded in us, but they're also positional. They have to do with where we are, where we stand. Um, and I think maybe the most important political lesson I can think of is that just because of your history doesn't mean that you're committed to being in the position of a victim or a position of an aggressor forever. And uh, you know, you need to think about the psychological issues around those positions. Tell us about the character Enver Eleven. The inspiration for that? He is an apprentice, time travel agent. So he is learning to be a spy and to travel to these worlds, which are mostly white, and to conceal himself in different ways. And I guess he's looking for adventure. And I think it was a book. I was also trying to capture that spirit of books I read when I was very young, which just, you had a sense of going on an adventure. And it was, mm -hmm. you know, you couldn't wait to keep reading them because you find out more and more about this amazing world. Um, the adventures I was particularly thinking of were Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped and uh, Treasure Island, you know, which are, I mean, I read them before I wrote this book and they are, they're incredible books still. You know? They are they're vivid and disturbing and, and they have, again, that dream-like quality, which is a very sinister dream. If you think about Long John Silver or the, the little black, what is that, the cross, whatever, that people get when they, they're going to be killed. Um, so I really wanted him to be someone who was waiting for his first adventure. And of course, in books, your first adventure is never quite what you think it's going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in this book, there is a theme of um, identity. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you wanted to specifically highlight? 
it's very hard to write a book without thinking about identity and who you are and stuff. I think Enver Eleven is young enough so that he's not quite sure who he is. He has kind of memories of his family and feelings about them. But um, I think he's, tr he's more trying to fit his way into this world. And all the other people around him are much more convinced about who they are. And uh, I think, I'm not sure I, I have a very, I'm not sure he has a very strong feeling about who he is yet. Mm. Now, Enver is based in Johannesburg. That's and true. You are based in Cape Town. That's true. <laughs> Why choose Johannesburg? <laughs> Johannesburg is a, firstly, well, Partly the book takes place after Supernova, and the idea is that everybody in Johannesburg ran into the mines because they were, had 24 hours of warning. Cape Town doesn't have mines. I don't know where we'd hide. You know, we'd hide in the, I don't know, I don't know where there's nowhere to hide. So we'd all be dead. Um, and also I liked, I liked the idea of, of Johannesburg as a, you know, the last African city that survives. And it doesn't make sense to make that about Cape Town. Some have categorized the book as Afro-futuristic or African fiction. Would you agree with that label? Yes, I mean, to the extent that any generalization covers, I mean, books are quite individual, like people. So the, gen the term covers some part of it, and it probably belongs to the vast galaxy now of Afro-futurist um, fiction and movies and so forth. Although I did start writing it long before I saw Black Panther, but I was very happy to see Black Panther when it came along. And lastly, what are you hoping that people will take away from this book? Are you hoping that they think about race and power differently? I think probably the nice thing about being a writer is, is you're not, you don't have to worry so much about what people think as maybe having passed through a certain experience, which a novel or a, a movie does, maybe it will touch them in some different way. But at the very least, what you want is for them to keep reading from the beginning to the end and to feel that was something very, that was unexpected or strange or there were parts of that that, that, I, that seemed implausibly real and yet strange at the same time. So I think, I think most writers want that feeling from a book. You know? That was Imran Kavadia discussing his book, A Spy in Time.